Previously on Roll Gay Roleplay. It seems like you've died on me. Oh no. Oh, oh shit. My god. Uh, I, I presume I'm here because you, uh, my soul is bound to you. I have bigger plans for you. See you again soon. And Humphrey, you feel yourself being tugged backwards. <laughs> See, fairy godmother. Stop the word. So as you start walking through town, uh, Edith, you take big shoulder block and tumble to the ground. Oh, heavens to Betsy. Watch where you're going. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I didn't, are you, are you from here? I've been trapped here for like years. How did you get, can you get back? Do you know how to get back? Not really. I gotta go. Mother is calling, but... Can you just tell your mother that you found some strangers and we need your help and just come with us? Oh, oh no. This is, this is the end of my outdoor time today. I have to go back with mother. Okay, this sounds like you're being held hostage. Is that the case? She's really close. How about you just come see me and I'll, I'll sneak outside and then we can talk. <sighs> my soulmate must be here somewhere. Oh. Look me in my eyes. Ah, oh, do you feel electricity between us? Your your must be uh the prince, prince number three. I've actually got a magic finding, a magic love finder device on me right here. This is so weird, <gasps> Prince. It is fate as the soothsayer told me. Cleo, just pretend. Okay, we're gonna have a shock, and then we'll get him to come back to the castle so we can just be on our way. Welcome to Roll Gay Roleplay, a real gay, real play D&D podcast. I'm Chris the DM and bit, 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 bit is Strava. <laughs> okay. Oh, fuck. Hi, my name is Katie and I play uh, Sherry Chapo and that's a joke I didn't get. My name is Brandon. I play Humphrey Evan After and I steal dope fucking Cadillacs. My pussy tastes like Apple Jacks. Me. Sorry. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Here's $20. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it took me a second, but I got you, boo. <laughs> I'm Tisha. I play Edith Wins Thereafter. And Chris is right. Bitistrava. Mm-hmm. Serbia was number one and should have won. Incredible. Is this Eurovision? Yes. 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 So happy I got it from just context clues. Hi, I am Jonathan. And you know what? Keep the change. Oh, bits. <laughs> Because I'm a little, 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 literal legend. <laughs> World's number one coke whore. Yes! Icon, icon. <laughs> that song was my shit for like a solid three months. Like, it was on replay for like a solid three months. Same. Damn. Before I start... I'm not putting a gay agenda in this episode since we didn't have an episode last week. We're just going to run this episode all the way through. But I do want to remind everybody we have our public poll on Patreon still to help us decide the setting for season five. The poll's been out for a few weeks and the same three have held the lead almost the entire way through. Right now, it looks like season five will be a futuristic neon metropolis, but only a couple votes behind that is a luxury cruise ship and only a couple votes behind that is a secret government agency. So anything can still happen. If you have not voted yet, head to our patreon patreon.com backslash roll gay role play find our public poll and cast your vote and as for our patrons a new poll will be out early this week to decide something else for season five the drinking apparatus not buckets and not pew 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 water guns but something else one last thing before we get to our question we are one week away from our three-year anniversary Oh, wow. fucking gross i know mm-hmm. we released our first episode on june 9th 2019 why am I getting emotional? Wow. It's the tequila. It's the tequila. 
<laughs> it's the tequila. Yeah. Uh, so you know what? Let that tequila come to use in our game. And this game came from my research. I started streaming this. No, I'm starting streaming this week. And in researching streaming, I came across some games that you are not allowed to stream on Twitch. Uh, and most of them are adult ratings, but mm. there are quite a few that do not have adult ratings that you are also prohibited to play. Now, don't look this up right now because the game is, I'm going to give you six titles of games and you're going to tell me which one of them is fake. The other five are real prohibited games that do not have an adult rating. That's so interesting. All right. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Here are the six games. Cuckled Simulator. <laughs> Dick 'em Up. <laughs> Genital Jousting. Porno Studio Tycoon. Suck My Dick or Die. Yes. What's Under Your Blanket? <laughs> Ew. So five of those are real game titles. One of those I came up with. Uh, what was the second one? Can you re read that again? Yeah, I'll read them all again. So it is Cuckold Simulator, Dick 'em Up, Genital Jousting, Porno Studio Tycoon, Suck My Dick or Die, What's Under Your Blanket? Uh, I vote for the second one is fake. You made it up. Dick 'em Up. Dick 'em Up. Is this a team game? No, you can choose individually. Have fun. Okay, I know Genital Jousting is real. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't ask, but I know. I think suck my dick or die. Seems a little violent, but like it sounds fake. I think dick em up sounds dick em up. fun to say, which is why I think that's made up. Yes, ditto. I literally don't know. Um, I'm going to say what's under my ear blanket. Okay. Brandon and Tisha were correct. Dick em up is fake. Whoop, whoop. It was too easy. Too easy. You can play Suck My Dick or Die. Oh my god. In fact, I do regularly. <laughs> <laughs> and you can play What's Under Your Blanket. And you said they're not adult only? They're not adult rating? Right. They're not adult ratings. Also, one of them was um, Demon Semen Inferno. What? Oh. Yeah. What the fuck? There's quite a few rough ones on there. Just got to do some Googling real quick. <laughs> Oh. I have a question about genital jousting, though, Brandon. Can, yeah. Can you pick your weapon? No, everyone's a giant penis that, like, <laughs> skitters around on the floor like a snake. Skitters around on the floor is a very apt description. <laughs> That's already the problem. <laughs> oh. But in the multiplayer mode, you can, like, you have to... Okay, so everyone's a giant penis, and there's balls at the base. But there's, like, a butthole between the two balls? And in the multiplayer mode, you're trying to stick yourself in the ball butthole. It's weird. It's bad. <laughs> it's gross. It's funny, but it's gross. It's on Steam. You can get it. I think it was on sale recently. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that might be the perfect type of game for us to be a sponsor for, though, since we're not quite sexually neutral. Yes. Come here, General Jousting. No, please. Stay away. <laughs> <laughs> oh well well done you two uh for guessing correctly and yeah that was my little game do we both get three level ups no you get Fuck nothing you. i have no prize Fuck for you, you. <laughs> i have no prize for you <laughs> three level ups. <laughs> <laughs> jonathan's just mad he didn't say it first oh absolutely <laughs> i'm just a bitter queen <laughs> Uh, speaking of royalty, though, uh, do we remember what happened last time? Yeah, well, that was good. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Um, so we have met an individual, and we are going to go visit them and their mother, or their not mother. Ah, Miguel, yes. Yes. We met Miguel, and we're going to visit them and their mother, because Edith is high on the hog about this kid. <laughs> Yeah, well, Edith ran into Miguel, and Miguel revealed that he was also from your world and came here not through his own will, and he seems to be kind of held against his will a little bit. He calls a woman mother who is not his uh, maternal figure, and he said it was the end of his outdoor time, so, you know, he needs some help and asked for yeah. it, and Edith came to the rescue, and the rest of you are rolling your eyes and dragging your feet. Correct. Well, I'm not dragging my feet. Cherry is dragging. Ah. Her feet for me. 
That's right. Humphrey is still under the effects of what three levels of exhaustion? I think so. And oh Edith's yeah, here one. Yeah, Edith got rid of two of them for him. Wait, so yes. we're about to go deal with like Coraline's mom with yeah. them having yeah, 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 yeah. three levels of exhaustion. Mm-hmm. Bum so sleepy. Listen, <laughs> Edith fully believes in doing whatever the fuck you want whenever the fuck you want. So if you don't want to come, you don't have to. But Miguel should be afforded that same luxury. If we're role playing right now, I just want to know why y- you feel obligated whenever you can do whatever you want right now. And your brother is exhausted and you're putting your brother in danger. You stood on my chest as soon as I woke up. I'm not your fucking sister, kid. I'm not your fucking sister. <laughs> I'm not your fucking <laughs> Okay, that's fine. Uh, because Humphrey's getting better. Cherry's taking care of him. And we, I have three and Cleo to help free this kid. Cleo's going to help because Cleo wants to look good in your eyes. So that's why. <laughs> Oh, and Jonathan's engaged to the prince or some shit. Did I seduce three? We seduced three. (laughs) It was a team effort. Well, you're a child. Don't say that. Hush. (laughs) Hush. Uh, (laughs) Not on my watch, kid. Um, I seduced three. (laughs) Yeah, you were just present in the chocolate strip club. (laughs) Hey, this was just a chocolate bar. It was a chocolate bar. I'm so dumb. Was that made clear the first time we walked up to it? I, that's I don't great. think it so. Was. Because yes, it, it was. It was. Oh, because yeah. I was immediately upset whenever you like said it that way. <laughs> yeah. No, he definitely said chocolate bar. That's wonderful. Thank you. Man, fuck this game. <laughs> <laughs> I love that I got both reactions. I wanted either. Thank you. <laughs> I heard it last time, but I didn't think it was deserving of a reaction. Oh, okay. Damn. Okay. Well, I'm gonna kill Edith today. <laughs> Just kidding. It was good. Let the games begin. <laughs> you all have tricked Prince Three into believing that Cleo is his soulmate. Prince Three is so in dire need. He's, well, he wants his soulmate so bad. So since you're here and you said you are and the spark was felt, he's on board. So yeah, we're going to pick up where we left off, which is outside the address that Miguel gave Edith. And we heard some glass crash and some yelling. Edith swings the door open, and inside is the same woman that you saw before, Edith, who was calling out to Miguel. Um, There's some glass on the ground, and she's staring off into a hallway, and she looks up and says, Ooh, well, is that Prince Three? Well, Prince, welcome to my home. Please come in. Sorry for the mess. The maid's not here right now. What can I help you with? Prince Three is just accompanying me. I'm here to uh, pick up Miguel. We're, uh, oh, to- my, no, my foster son. No, he is, he's a troubled boy. Not from here, you see. I'm taking care of him. I'm, I'm, Aww. is, he, is he, he, did he run into you in, in the market earlier? I'm, he's such an idiot. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh, oh n- wow. No, I, I'm sorry. That's not what's happening. Uh, I'm actually uh, here to thank you for fostering him for the time that you have been. But he's ready to go back to his uh, his world now. And I am here, um, as you see. And she takes a drink out of her mug and it says, Realm's best social worker. I'm here <clears throat> on behalf of the government. And uh, we're just taking him back to... Uh, where he belongs. Uh, we're, we are also here to compensate you as well for your time. And uh, uh, elbows Cleo and says, <clears throat> uh, can you give this nice lady here uh, some money for her time she spent taking care of Miguel? Hello, Sheila. I am Florals in Spring, but you can call me Cleo. And I'm under the, uh, I'm under the impression that you have given Miguel... A place of refuge while they are getting their life together. And now Miguel is ready to go home. And we are here to pay you for the amount of money that you have spent possibly taking care of him. So I'm going to not give her a chance, mother, a chance to give me an amount. Okay. Uh, um, But I say to my little wall, I say... 
25 gold. <laughs> Do we even have money? We have endless money. We have endless. Yeah. Oh, that's right. As long as you I don't. Yeah. Purse. As long as I don't get greedy. Get greedy. I should have made it a purse. Yeah, but I say, uh, yeah, I say with my uh, deep masculine mask for mask Sean Cody voice. Abyssal. And yes. <laughs> um, Sean Cody voice. I am going straight to hell, and I I, I pull out twenty five gold, hopefully unscathed. Yeah, twenty five gold can appear, uh, no problem. And uh, Mother will say, well, if you are ready to handle a 30-year-old man who can't do much, then I'm, I'm okay with letting him go. But Prince Three, while you're here, I'd love for Prince Three to meet my daughter, who is a perfect match for you, your soulmate. I know it. All right, I'm, I'm so sorry, uh, Shayla. I, uh, I, Florals and Spring... I'm already betrothed to her Prince Three, so I will just have to say that Prince Three is not ready or um unable to meet your daughter. So we're gonna be along our way, and you're going to deal with it. <laughs> it seems that I have something that you want, and you have something that I want. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you please elaborate? If you would like to take Miguel with you, then you'll leave Prince Three with me. Or uh, you know what? Um, sorry, I don't care. So I like grab Prince Three's hand, and we're gonna walk out. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> um, I I happened. Fuck! Fuck! I forgot. I for, I freaking <laughs> forgot. I look over. <laughs> I fucking look over at Edith. How does Edith look? Her eyes are very wide and her mouth is open. Like, oh shit. And she, like, I guess she nods. Yeah, go ahead. So you're giving me approval? Yeah. And as I'm walking out, I turn around and I say, uh, the fate of the world rests on the shoulders of this here prince, my future betrothed. And I would be remiss to allow him into the wrong hands. And I say, I'm sure that your daughter is an amazing person and would fit someone else just perfectly. But we need to make sure that our prince gets home post haste so that we do not have any issues for the fairy world. So, uh, adieu. No prince three, then no Miguel. You can leave. Yeah, that's... Are Cherry and I in that room? Well, it's up to you if you uh, entered. I mean, you can be like, move closer, move closer. <laughs> Just like... Maybe we should get in there. I mean, they're talking about getting married. Isn't that adult stuff? Uh, well, I think you've been in enough adult <laughs> situations on this trip <laughs> that you're an you're a honorary adult. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to start to edge closer. Yeah, um, I'm sorry, ma'am, but that's, that's not exactly how this works. Uh, if you are unwilling to give us the boy, uh, more deputies will arrive here, uh, and they won't be nearly as nice as I am. Objection, Your Honor. Uh, that is a full-grown man. That is an adult <laughs> human being. Um, as you say that, uh, Florals pushes Prince Three out of the doorway, and then like turns <laughs> around like full military. About face, there we go. Does a full, like, about face and stares down mother. Why don't you give me a perception check? I surely will. All of you can do that since you're looking at her. Absolutely. Woof. I got a six. I got a seven. So we're both distracted by each other. <laughs> 24. Oh, yeah. So 18. Okay. So I guess it makes sense. Cherry and Humphrey just paying attention to each other. Just trying to get in the room, hold each other up. Yeah, I'm trying to explain to her what being an adult means. <laughs> Taxes and right. saving random bags. Sometimes you turn into gingerbread and it just happens. You gotta accept it. No, he told me about that. <laughs> As you begin your stare down, Cleo, you see Mother's eyes, her entire eye turns red. Just a glossy red. And then she blinks and her pupils are back. And she says... I think it is time for you to leave. Whenever I see that, um, I don't think 
that Cleo is capable of being clandestine. So immediately Cleo says, Oi, oi, uh, you over there, why did your eyes turn red for a second? What are your? And I pull on my Enchiridion and I walk next to Edith. I like shove like Edith with, with my shoulder. And I say, Edith, her eyes turn red. I don't think she's human or fairy. I think she's something else, possibly a monster. And I'm writing down eyes turn red in my Enchiridion. That's very astute there, Wonder Boy. All right. It's so sarcastic. <laughs> I'm going to cast Detect Thoughts. Okay. And I want to read her thoughts. Is that a saving throw on my part? or? Um, so the duration is concentration up to one minute. For the duration, you can read the thoughts of certain creatures. When you cast a spell and as your... Ah, when you cast the spell and as your action on each turn until the spell ends... You can focus your mind on any one creature that you can see within 30 feet of you. If the creature you choose has an intelligence of 3 or lower, or doesn't speak any language, the creature is unaffected. You initially learn the surface thoughts of the creature, what is most on its mind at the moment. As an action, you can either shift your attention to another creature's thought or attempt to probe deeper into the same creature's mind. If you probe deeper, the target must make a wisdom saving throw. If it fails, you gain insight into its reasoning... It's emotional state and something that looms large in its mind. If it succeeds, the spell ends. Okay. Then its foremost thoughts are how to get her daughter to the prince alone and how to get rid of all of you. She's mainly focused on making sure that her daughter can get to Prince 3 alone and just spend some time together. Uh, And she sees you all as an issue here. So can I look at Edith's face and like notice if she like is shocked or anything? She is looking a little taken aback. So she did take one step back from the lady. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, I'm sorry. I didn't get your name. While you are about to role play her getting her name. I, um, Shut up. Um, I move <laughs> and I say, All right, well, I think it's time for us to go. And I whisper, I walk over to um, Prince Three. I'm going to whisper something in his ear and then I'm going to cast Pass Without Trace. Okay. And she'll say, uh, The name's Kilmore. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay yeah i'm passing out trace girl bye <laughs> girl bye kill more all right um family name mm. no just mine it is <laughs> all right can... <laughs> just mine. <laughs> can i do the second action to probe deeper that's a wisdom saving throw yes okay my wisdom save is not the best 13 that fails. Okay. So what more are you trying to know? I gain insight into its reasoning and something that looms large in its mind, something such as something it worries over, loves, or hates. Kilmore's biggest concern is to make sure that her daughter becomes the queen and gets all the money, and they're going to do that by charming the prince and just, I mean, kind of doing what you're doing. But yeah. Trickery. Yeah, um, don't sympathy guy. for the Wanna devil this shit. No, ma'am. <laughs> but that is what her... She's, she's after making sure that her daughter is in line with the prince. Uh, she's going to go home with Prince 3. That's the plan through whatever means necessary. Listen, I, I feel like you really want something, uh, which is uh, 3, right? Well, 3 is already betrothed. So there are two other princes. Um, you know, just down the way in, in the houses back towards the city. And if you bring me a prince for my daughter, then you get Miguel. Yeah, I don't think that I'm really into human trafficking here. Um, but, uh. Well, that's a shame. Oh. But, uh, hey, hey, um, and. At that point, uh, Edith looks to Cleo and says... You can't find Cleo. 
Oh, Edith <laughs> looks towards where Cleo was and sees three, and she tells three to get out of here. Leave. Well, hang on a second. Can we just take the the daughter to? We're going to the king's wedding pretty soon. We could like introduce her to. But the that king means that and the prince. Oh, sorry, I am invisible and quiet. Sorry. <laughs> Will that be all right with you, ma'am? You want us all to travel down to the wedding? No, to... not you. Your daughter. Oh. No, no, no. We don't have enough invats to bring you to. I'm so sorry. <laughs> if you want your daughter to meet the king and the princess, we could take her off your hands. No. You'll leave the prince with me. It's easy. Easy transaction here. Don't make it difficult. Why don't we... Why do we care so much about this dude? But they're in love. Well, first of all, it's not that we care so much about this dude. It's the principle, right? Like, we're not going to be trading human... Like, we're not going to be trading people. I don't want to do that. I I would never. We could just leave. But Miguel is stuck here. I can't do that either. Okay, so what's the solution here? Are we going... Are we going to go kill her? <laughs> As you're uh, discussing this, there's a younger woman that comes out and her swings her hair wildly and goes, Hey, I heard commotion out here. Is she hot? She's very hot. <laughs> Probably showing more off than you normally would in front of your mother, but she's, you know, confident and good for her. She's so pretty. She's also wearing gloves that have long, sharp nails on the end of them. <sighs> Dramatic. Oh, I don't like where this is going. Is there a prince that can see me? And Prince Thee will be like, I do see you. Why am I leaving? I won't turn down. What are we doing here? I am hungry. What? Uh... I was not paying attention. Prince Three. Okay, here's, here's what's going on. Uh, this lady wants you to marry her daughter. This uh, really gorgeous one right here. However, yeah. I think that they're going to try to trick you. Which, you know, come see, come saw. Uh, but mm. that's up to you. If you would like to stay here. Do you speak French? No, I don't. Don't have for asking me that. <laughs> 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 Never been so insulted in my life. I am not interested in your daughter. I'm not interested in women at all. My father doesn't understand it. Obviously, neither do you. Yes. And... Kilmore mother will go, oh, well then, honey, go, go get your brother. Go get your brother. What? Not literally like Cinderella. Go get your fucking brother. Go. All right, I'll go get him. Uh, And the daughter runs off and fairly quickly, a short haired person comes out. Same kind of motion, waves the non-existent hair. Hi, I'm the son. Are you interested in me then? No, I have a small penchant for magic. I feel like that's the same person. No, I have I have two kids and then the other one, the Miguel. Can I do a insight check? Yeah, go for it. I got a four. Oh. I'm mistaken. I, you are right. That is a different person. Clearly I am. Well, you are attractive. That is no... Doubt in my mind. Will I feel the same spark? Should I find out? My fiance isn't here. Maybe it it couldn't hurt. Uh, Prince Three will walk forward with his hands out, and the son will walk forward. And as they grasp hands, Prince Three will say, "I am in love. This is my soulmate. How did I not see it all along?" Edith cast a spell magic. Oh, okay. That's what you're going to do? Because I was going to just stab the sun. Beat the shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, as you cast a spell magic, Prince Three goes, That is not true at all. You lied. Can we just make note of the fact that I have. I am poised behind Mother right now. <laughs> oh, that's right. Get down on all fours. I'll push her. I'm not on all fours, bitch. <laughs> it's a schoolyard. Um, but I am poised behind Mother to assassinate her. And mm. so Edith is going to look at Cherry and Humphrey amalgamation, whatever they are right now, and say, go get, go in the back there and go get Miguel. I'm going to start edging. 
Uh, yeah. If you said that out loud, I did. The uh, claws are going to come out. Can I get a surprise attack? Yeah, let's all roll initiative, and then we'll give Cleo a surprise attack since you are invisible. S- oh man. Yep. Do I have disadvantage on initiative because I'm like holding on to someone? <laughs> no, you can have normal. You're fine. Okay. Oh, shit. I got a fucking nine. I got a dirty 20. And I got a three. And I got a seven. Wow. That's not good, y'all. Okay. <laughs> we know, Chris. All right. Well, Cleo, go ahead and take your first action then, since you get a surprise attack being hidden and all. Um, I immediately run up behind this bitch with both daggers. And I say, unfortunately for your Prince 3 is mine. They're in love. And that's a, t- that's a, I don't think in love. I think that I just, I'm, I, I'm territorial. Uh, so that's a 24. That does hit. Yeah. You're fucking right. It does. So that's 1d4. So that's a four points of damage. And then 10d10. Oh, fuck. The thing. The thing. What oh, thing? I forgot I gave you such a powerful fucking dagger. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, yeah. So that's an extra 55 points of damage. What's the total damage? 59. Okay. She's really, really, really fucking hurt. Dude, I'm going sta- to stab her with my other dagger. <laughs> my dagger of venom. Kill her! And that's 13 plus 7, which is 20. Can you do all that in a surprise attack? I have, I have two daggers in my hand. Yeah, you're right. You're getting, you're getting an extra attack round. You're right. Uh, you said 20? Yeah. Yeah, that hits. And that's 7 points of damage. That, and then an extra 2d10. You don't need to do the extra. That, the 7 was fine. And that's going to be 12. <laughs> okay. So that's 19 points. Go ahead and explain her death. Oh, yeah. So she tried me too much today, bitch. So, um, yeah, I uh, say I whisper. I um, stab her the first time. Unfortunately for you, you have tried me a, a little too much. And now you must pay. And then I stab her the first time and then i get her again and i say look over here and i see her children like they they look at me and as they do i carve a flower into her forehead oh my god with my other dagger uh and because i'm um, florals in spring mm-hmm. <laughs> florals in forehead <laughs> i carve um a poinsettia into her forehead and i say Sor, uh, rest in pieces. And then I uh, put my daggers back um, where they belong. And then I'm going to use my bonus action to Misty Step. Can I, can I, can I do that? Yeah. Or is it too much in a surprise round? I, well, what do you Misty Step? What do you, you don't need to do any of that. You know you're good now. Right, but there's two children that can also be my ass. Oh, uh, yes. Okay, that's fair. There's that's more children. Sure. Probably one child. Um, yeah, you can misty step. That's fine. I misty step over towards the entrance of the door. If I can get okay. out, that'd be great. I'll get you to the door. You can get to the door. All right. Yeah, that's 30 feet. Or cool. 30 feet. Yeah. So I misty step over towards the door, and that's my bonus action. And that's the end. Well, it would have been mother next, but tough shit. <laughs> She's gone. Yeah, mm. I, I regret not doing any uh, surprise attacks of my own. So, Humphrey, you're next. Um, Humphrey's gonna kind of lay back and go gumdrops. Go and cast Eldritch Blast. So three gumdrops are gonna shoot off of his chest and aim directly at the sun. Okay. Do I roll three separate attack rolls? You can roll one or you can roll three. I don't care. Oh, but I have disadvantage on attack rolls because I'm exhausted. You do. It's a 26 with disadvantage. With disadvantage? Yeah, that hits. I got a 26 and a 28. Damn. Do you want me to do the damage for all of them, like the same die roll or three die roll? Again, up to you. Don't care. Okay. Well, that's going to be 12, 24, 36. Damn. Okay, that's a good amount of damage. Uh, yeah, the sun's not looking great. Anything else you can do? Yeah, I'll action search and do it again. <laughs> Son of a bitch. And okay. bitch, I'll do it again. And I'll do it again. <laughs> bop, bop. Oh, 
I don't think that's going to do it. Yeah, Cherry's definitely like, damn, she's used to being like the fighter, and now everyone's just killing and slashing and <laughs> from my arms. I got a 14 to hit. A 14 does not hit. Yeah, so I guess the other ones go wide. All right, a few gumdrops hit, a few miss. Not a bad round. So now it is Cherry's turn. It's Cherry's turn, finally. Yeah, and you still have the same hurt son in front of you. And that's it. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I am going to enter my rage, of course. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, does my taser still work? Yeah. Hmm. I don't have the stats for a taser. Where's the taser stats? But I think because I have someone in my arms, I will have to use either my tail or the taser. Mm. Careful, don't draw me. <laughs> that- I'm a delicate flower. I thought that taser, what it did is five, just automatic five damage. And it to each zaps party. me. Yeah. Yeah. To each. Yep. Five to each. Okay. Well, would that also translate to Humphrey? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I could just elbow you. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm going to use my tail. I grow a lashing spiny tail, which deals 1d8 plus five piercing damage and has the reach property. All right. So. Roll to attack. Roll. Okay. Does a 17 hit? It does. Nice. So that's 10 damage. Okay. And I get two attacks per blah, blah, blah. So that's 13. Does that hit? No, 13 does not. Okay. But on my previous bite, I use Infectious Fury. So when I hit a creature with my natural weapons, when I am raging, the beast within me can curse my target with a rabid fury. The target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or suffer the consequences. So it's 15. Okay. Uh, three plus one, four. Oh, you fail. So you have to use your reaction to make a melee attack against another creature of your choice that you can see. And you take 2d12 psychic damage. Oh, shit. Is there another target in my range that you can see? No. Okay, so you're just going to hurt yourself, and you're going to take 12 psychic damage. Okay, uh, this thing's not looking good at all. Sorry, boy. It's just trying to become a prince. Uh, Edith. All right. Listen, kid, I, I don't know what your game is here, but it looks like it's over. Do you surrender? No, all right, just don't, don't kill me. Let's be done, and then we can talk, because that hurt a lot, and you already killed my mom, so let's stop, yeah? Okay. And then Edith will t- take her, yeah, Edith will take her um, movement to move over to the mother and wrap some rope around, like, tie, tie the mother up, wrap some rope around her. Um, the, the dead mother? The dead yep. one? Cleo's not done. I know Cleo's well, not done. You were also next up, so if Edith doesn't have an action, Cleo does get to choose what to do next. But yeah, Edith's gonna revivify the mother. Oh, uh, uh, um, I don't. Well, she's gonna take her turn to tie her up first. Okay. Yeah, so she wants okay. to tie her up very well, um, as well as possible. All right. I mean, she's, it's a body, so. Yeah. Cleo is looking at you very crossed right now. It, it, it is Cleo's turn then, so up to you how you'd like to. Uh... Is the mother revivified? No, not yet. She's just tied I up. look at the sun and I say, um, before I, I, I am walking up to the sun and I say, sorry, I just noticed that. You're kind of on the losing side. Mm. And it also seems that you want the man that is betrothed to me. How do we fix this problem? Um, Just let me have him. Why do you want him? Why do I want him? Yeah. Because if he goes with me, then we are going to save the fairy world uh, from imminent destruction. But if he goes with you, then he's going to live a happy life, and the fairy world will cease to be. That seems extreme. I don't know that I wouldn't. Maybe I could save the fairy world. I don't even know it's in danger. I... Exactly. I have more knowledge of you of what's going on, and maybe it would be better if the prince were in my hands. 
Mm, but he's hot and has a lot of money, and I really do, I really do want both of those things. Yeah, great. So I uh, hoist both daggers up. I'm gonna stab them in his chest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Twenty. Mm, mm-hmm. And that's seven points of damage. And Still this is a alive. Twenty-two. Uh huh. There we go. Just and go ahead. This is six points of damage. <laughs> that's it. I stab both of the daggers into his chest, and I I let go of the daggers as they're lodged into um this poor boy's chest. I like. <laughs> Let go. I wrap my right hand around his uh, his neck and I like shush him down and I say, "This is better for both of us." And I say, uh, "I say, uh, your death will save the world today." And then, as he like falls to the floor, I um, put my index finger and middle finger over his eyes and I close them. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, like... that, uh, I, I mean, that'll take us out of initiative. Both of your enemies are dead. Um, Brandon, your instincts were right. There was only one child. Heaven's defense. Oh, gender fluid child. Oh, now I feel bad. Time up. Leave this mother. I, I figured that Cleo here would like to find out what they were. Cleo opened his Enchiridion. So I was going to uh, help you out there, but let's, uh, this kid. Not enough that they would uh, bring upon the possible destruction of the fairy world. I'm sure that I will meet more just like them. I mean, they were definitely pretty evil, but I feel bad that they're dead. I don't. (laughs) Yes. Uh, From one of the (laughs) door openings, uh, Miguel will walk out and just say, Oh, yeah, I'm not upset. But not also what I intended when I said you guys should come over. Was this a consenting kidnapping? No. I mean, kind of. She said that she would take care of me, and then it kind of turned into, I I had to stay here. And she just kind of, I don't know, made me do what she wanted. I, it, it would fade in and out. Sometimes I would have free will, but most of the time I wouldn't. So... I say, yeah, she was most powerful, as I like stick my uh, foot onto the child, onto the boy's head, and like use that as like an anchor to pull my daggers out. Oh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow! Kind of would have liked to talk to mother before she died. Edith, Edith, you can revivify. You can revivify her if you just use your magic. I mean, I I can. I have to do it quickly. I gotta pick one or the other. Oh, the mother. Her. her. She, she, she took something of mine that I want back. So I'd like to know where it's at. Okay. All right. As you revivify her, I have, like, um, climbed onto, like, I guess a shelf in the, in the room that we're in. And I'm poised to, like, land on her the moment she fucks up. All right. I revivify okay. her. She has one HP. <laughs> Lovely. She's coughs up a bit of blood and just. <coughs> oh my god. <sighs> Ooh. What? Well, and Edith takes another drink out of her coffee mug and it now says Realm's Best Life Giver. <laughs> <laughs> well, Miguel here uh, wanted to ask you a question, so I brought you back to life. I'm not sure if you deserved it. Uh, we will see. Yeah, the cards, my cards, the cards you took when I came here, where did they go? You took them and I never got them back. (laughs) You'll never see those cards again. No. (laughs) No, Is that what she said? Yeah, that is. Hmm. I lost them in a gamble. No. Look. I thought they were worthless, and I was going to try and sell them to people at the casino who didn't know any better, but evidently they were worth something to some magic person over in the casino. I got to the high rollers, as I do, and I lost them. So they're gone. (laughs) Unless you're going to go win them back. That's really disappointing. I think this conversation ends with 
a giant lollipop hitting the mother. Bonked. Okay, that. that's that's quick in the house. Okay. Shit. If you look at Humphrey, their uh, their gingerbread side is smiling, going, "Things we fucking kill should stay dead." <laughs> and then bitch get a get a um how many licks? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> to the Tootsie Roll Pop. Um, is that what you're, okay? That's what you're doing for sure. Yeah, for sure. It is. Great. And Miguel will kind of fall back on his ass and just oh. Hey, you want us to fucking kill someone? Get your cards back. I immediately, as uh, Miguel um, has fallen, and I saw what um, Humphrey did, which was very on par. I uh, jump over to Miguel and catch him before he falls, and I say, oh, "Hi, Miguel." I'm Florals and Spring, and we are here to get your cards back for your, so that you don't have to worry about not having your cards. Yeah? Yeah, we're real good at killing shit. That's great. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, you guys are awesome. All right. Great. Can we go now? I mean, I feel I would like to leave this house. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Let me grab her money really quick, because she did collect money. That's an excellent idea. We should loot. It's a grown-up thing. Um, as y'all say that, I pull out my wallet and I say, or we don't have to worry about it. I have my trusty wallet over here. You don't need any gold? No. Uh, the only thing I would say is look for useful artifacts. Oh. Something that would be useful to us. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to look for you. I'm going to look with your... Great, why don't you, uh, whoever wants to loot, go ahead and roll, uh, investigation. I'm gonna loot. Alright, a 15. Nice, I got an 18. Okay, then yeah. As you're looking around, you find, as Miguel said, there is actually, like, quite a bit of gold. There's, like, 125 gold lying about. There's also a lot of clothing, just shirts, pants, shoes, things like that. Some fancy, some not. So if you want to grab anything for a quick change, you probably could, Cleo. Absolutely. There's jars of preserved penises. Oh, my God. Oh. Yikes. Yeah, pretty deranged person you killed. So you're good with, with what you guys did. Uh, and there's also um, two charm person potions lying about. So you can each take one of those. Nice. Taking all of it. Okay. Great. How much gold did we get again, um, like, sorry? 125. Perfect. Actually, as you're looking around, I think, Cherry, you got the um, highest perce- our investigation. As you opened one of the drawers in Mother's Room, you also found a voucher for five gold pieces at the Pickle Spire Casino. Pickle Spire Casino. 5GP at Pickle Spire. I'm an adult. That means I can gamble now. I'm I'm sorry. How did you become an adult there, Cherry? I gave a permission, Toots. Humphrey and I had a conversation. Uh, Humphrey had a conversation with you and now you're an adult? Yeah, she's old enough to kill a man. She's old enough to gamble. Right, right. Life-changing decisions, both of them. Wait, has Cherry never been like a child-aged child since the beginning? <laughs> No, she she is she's a child age child. Oh God! <laughs> Prince three will finally take his turn and say, "I'm going to kill them all." Stab, stab! And Prince three will run up and stab one of the bodies, and say, "Done." Okay. I like this guy. I was here for Prince three from the beginning until he did that. I cringe. <laughs> How much cookie is Humphrey now? They're pretty oh. cookie. Yeah. Uh, Miguel, I'm sorry. I'm not sure if we can go to this gambling place. We really need to get uh, my brother back. He's not doing too well. You oh. see? Yeah. I mean, if you if you can't, I guess. Nor, 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 Edith, Edith. Hello. I do believe that we can definitely go help uh, Miguel find the things at the casino and i'm afraid can just sit this one out as long as we're smart and casual about the occasion 
We can definitely make sure that things happen correctly. Yeah, you go to the casino, I take the prince, we go down to the fairy godmother, I fucking bash her brains in and we're all good. I agree we cannot leave this person without closure. We shall gamble. Nah, you're coming with me, hot stuff. We're going down to the fairy godmother. Where are we going? Things are escalating quickly. We have to stop the wedding. Yeah, I think the fairy godmother told us we have to stop the wedding. Yeah, the fairy godmother told you to see her before the wedding to stop it. You are still at nine days away from the wedding. So we have time. That's I believe that we at? can do both. We can do... Yeah, we can do both. Let's go ahead and get the cards, and then we'll go to Fairy Godmother, and then we'll go stop the king. That worked for you, Humphrey. Can I kill someone in the casino? No. No. I don't know. I, I'm I'm going to go to the casino, and I, I would really appreciate the help, but you guys have helped me so much, so I understand. If you, Can I just... Can I buy you guys a drink with some of the gold I just stole from Mother? Maybe we can go to the chocolate bar and just have a drink and talk and see what we want to do? Oh, Nora, thank you. I'm no interested in uh, any of the alcohol, but I will definitely help you and your endeavor to get your stuff up back. So, that's where it is. Okay. All right. Well, uh, there is somebody that you guys know that you've met before that knows uh, how to get in and out of this town. That maybe you want to go talk to. We didn't kill them, right? <laughs> no, you did not kill quick them. Quick change. Markle yes. Sparkle. Markle Sparkle, your quick change artist. He was last at the chocolate bar. Great. All right. How about how about uh, Humphrey? We go to the bar, and then we go to the casino, and then we go to the fairy godmother. Um. Uh. If you want to punch me, you can punch me, if that'll help. I'm not sure what this bloodlust is from. I think Humphrey kind of looks at you and the dismisses the candy hammer and then just passes out into Cherry's arms again. <laughs> do, do we want to rest before we head out there? I know I'm slightly tired. Yeah, same. I could definitely use a full meal. <laughs> okay. Is that what you like to do? Is, is it rest time for everyone? I, I mean, so, Cherry's yeah. getting tired of carrying Humphrey around. Like, not, like, physically tired, <laughs> but just she can't really wow. do much without dropping you on your fucking face. Yeah. That's I fair. thought we were friends. We are friends, <laughs> but I am literally carrying you. <laughs> well, uh, we'll let you all get some rest, and then we'll pick up the next episode once you're fully rested and at least one level of exhaustion is healed for both Edith and Humphrey. Excellent. Cool. Well, then we will continue to the casino next time, and hopefully we can help Miguel get his cards. Until then, I'm Chris the DM. You can find me on all social media at Chris Drinks Lemonade. I'm Tisha. You can find me on Instagram at the number one Tish, the number one. I'm Brandon, and that better count as a combat that levels us up. I did, I did say that, didn't I? Hi, yeah. my name is Katie, and the government birds deleted all my social media, so I'm still offline. They're not real. Birds aren't real. Birds aren't real. That's why I said the government's birds, obviously. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jonathan, and have a good afternoon, evening. See you next week. Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> An RGRP LLC production. Music by Joe Barsanti.